It's an adventure four years in the making. You escape from the prehistoric landscape of Jurassic Park to be entertained amid the palatial splendor of ancient Egypt. You're confronted by soldiers amid the gothic might of a medieval stronghold before being greeted by members of the Tudor court. You experience the gloom of the Industrial Revolution and the charm of a Victorian street and then find yourself floating through the solar system. Not the Universal Film Studios in Hollywood, but the Charmont Primary School in West Bromwich. Here, the corridors are not simply a means of getting from A to B. These are passages through history from AD to BC. So this is what all your corridors used to look like? Yes. This is a 1930s building with no stimulus at all. This is how the whole building looked uh, three or four years ago. And what made you decide that every corridor needed to be decorated? Basically, it grew. The whole thematic approach grew as we changed our curriculum. The theme of each corridor is used as the basis for lessons, from baking bread, Egyptian style, to performing plays about Victorian social conditions. A boy, Mrs. Hutton. A rat on two legs, more like. And the themes are extended into the classroom and around IT suites, so pupils are well and truly immersed in their subjects. The scenes form a timeline running from one end of the school to the other, starting 65 million years ago. This is part of Jurassic Park. It's the start of the world as the children would know it. They've seen films about the dinosaurs, but they haven't experienced, and you can't obviously experience the dinosaurs of today. And it's not just a visual experience? No, it's also a feel and a touch experience. For example, if you touch the dinosaur's skin, it actually will go in. And tell me, does it actually eat pupils or members of staff? Um, I have seen children trying to feed it. I'm saying it because I'm not sure what sex it is. It's quite static. It uh, just, just stands there. From the age of the dinosaurs, we leap through time to the days of the pharaohs. Right, we've entered the area of the Egyptians, the land of the pharaohs. This is where the children are going to learn all about Egypt, an ancient civilization. It just represents again what you would expect to see in ancient Egypt. In this lesson, pupils are looking at the hieroglyphs on the walls and learning to write their names like an Egyptian. Now, did the Egyptians write from left to right like we do? So did no. they go right left to cross your page? No. What did they do? Shannon? They went down. They went down the page, didn't they? It brings learning alive uh, for the children and for staff, and it makes it far more interesting. Rather than looking at a textbook and a picture, we can actually come and touch and feel and, and do all the, the things that, you know, the first-hand experience of learning. And you get to wear some interesting <laughs> costumes. Oh, we certainly do get to wear some interesting costumes, yes. <laughs> what are you exactly? I am an Egyptian slave today. An Egyptian we slave? Have, yes, I have been named Couscous. Any particular reason? <laughs> no, it was just Couscous and my colleague is Nefertiti. <laughs> Nefertiti is in an adjacent part of the palace, with pupils who are about to get a real taste of Egypt. This is the bread we made before, this morning. Can you remember what was in it? What we used to make it? Dates. Dates, good girl. Roger? Uh, flour. Flour, yeah. Salt. Salt, that's right. Shall we try it, see what it tastes like? Hurried. Hurried! Oh dear. I like the dates. Yeah? Do you prefer that to the bread you have at home? It gives the children an opportunity to experience um, a little bit about what life was like in Egyptian times. Do your pupils call you Nefertiti as well, or Mrs Nefertiti? Well, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Only when we're doing Egyptians. <laughs> and what better setting for dressing up and having a go at sand dancing? Do you like dressing up like this? Yes. Why is, it, why is it good? What's so special about it? The makeup. Makeup? Because you can wear makeup. Does your mum wear makeup like that? Yeah. This she? Just like that? No. She's not an Egyptian princess then? No. <laughs> Do you think you would have liked to have lived in the Egyptian times? No. Why not? 
you you get to up when you're walking on the sand. Would you like to be a real Egyptian princess? Yes. Why? Because you get to do whatever you wanted to do. Can't you do that now? Mm, no. No. Uh, tell me, is there actually a mummy in that sarcophagus? No, you'll find all the mummies at the school gate. We go gothic next to a medieval setting in the school reception. This is what greets visitors as they arrive, wondering whether they've come to the right building. We moved on to a thousand years ago. We're in the medieval castle hall. On my left is the dungeons. And this is where it all started. The school turned part of the foyer into an IT suite and needed to install security bars. It made the place look like a prison, so why not turn it into a medieval dungeon? The actual dungeon looked superb and the rest of this area that you're standing in, um, it needed to be brought up to the same standards and we decided to start to create a bigger area. And as you can see, we ended up by putting in the medieval armour and the medieval knights all around for the children to enjoy and to stimulate in their studies of the medieval part of our history. Tell me, I'm a bit confused. Are we in a monastery or a castle? It doesn't really matter. When we're acting, it could be the castle, it could be the monastery. And how does dressing up as a monk help their education? It helps because they're role-playing, they're able to react with each other, they're able to play off each other and have something to write about at the end. And are they a silent order? Mm, I hope so. This school is a quiet school. Well, most of the time anyway. Our trek through history takes us to a street in Tudor, England. So we've come forward 500 years into the Tudor Street. And what have we got here? Another very interesting period of English history. And we've created for the children an area where they can experience play role and experience life as it was in the Tudor times. A lot of attention has been paid to detail. We've uh, designed into the building, for example, the windows. The earlier Tudor was of the square variety. The later design was of a triangular diamond shape. So this really is authentic? Yes. I knew we got it right when Sir Walter Raleigh started to haunt the place. We come to the end of our journey into history when we reach the 18th and 19th centuries. It's also the end of the corridor. We've come into the Ironbridge area for the Industrial Revolution. That's why the West Midlands is here. It's all to do with the growth of industry. Here we have an old factory that existed 250 years ago. But of course we have to use this as an educational purposes of today and therefore it's uh, used as an ICT area. While industrial revolution meets information revolution outside, inside the classroom it's back to slates and canes. Eight, subtract eight. Now, answers. There's your face boy on the end. One, yes it is. You need a wash boy. Is this fun or is it a bit scary? It's fun. Why, what's fun about it? Um, we, we get to dress up like Victorian children and act like Victorian children. But the teacher's got a cane. He won't really hurt us with a cane. Really? Mm. Let me check. You're not going to use it then? I don't think so. No. Do Victorian teaching methods have any redeeming features? Um, it's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun, it, it's fun, I mean, it, it's fun to do, but I, I couldn't do it all day, every day. Yeah. Um, so what do they get out of this, the pupils? It's, it's, it's having a Victorian experience. They, they can actually empathise with what it was like to be little Johnny or little Mary in 1875 or whatever. And, and we've all found that to actually put the clothes on and, and feel the part, and they've all done the same, I think. 
and to actually be in it and, and instead of just looking at a book about chimney sweeps or whatever it is, to actually think, gosh, that's what it was like when they were at school. The role play continues in the Victorian street, where local gentry and their maid are doing a bit of window shopping. Uh, my lady, would you have had a job? Certainly not. I'm a lady. Do you like being a lady? Yes. Do you think you could cope with it? Yes. Are there many in West Bromwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> This sarcophagus is the work of pupils, but all the rest is the creation of a specialist two-man team called Shades of Light. One concentrates on the painting and murals, the other on the three-dimensional material. So what are you doing here, Steve? I'm actually putting foliage on to uh, try and create a palm tree similar to the palm trees in the picture. Where do you get all the ideas from? Um, the idea is grow as we make as we produce the theme but that they don't just happen we actually uh, they're sort of organic the, the builds are an organic build what's your favorite my favorite is the die it's got to be the dinosaur because i've enjoyed making that so much i mean the the effects of the skin the texturing of the skin has just um, been really interesting is to it me. a genuine dinosaur skin is it no it's muslin and, and glue and you just have to uh pull the, the muslin down and create the, uh, the effect of the skin. The head will call us in and they'll have an idea and we sort of just you know, banter it around and then we'll come up with a, you know, I'll go back and I'll, I'll do some designs and then they'll agree upon that. How much research do you do? Oh, we do a tremendous amount of research. Um, all these panels um, surrounding us, all the hieroglyphic panels, there's actually a story for the children. But all of the surrounding artwork and that, yes, it's all been researched. It's, don't just pluck it out of thin air. I mean, we need it because we're trying to give them something that's genuine. Obviously, in the boundaries of being a school. When time and money allows, the next job will be a corridor that connects reception classes. Now, how much does it cost? The overall bill is round about £110,000. We raised £90,000 towards it, so the actual cost to the budget was very, very small. And how did you manage to raise £90,000? We had uh, plenty of concerts which raised money. I had a very good um, member of my PTA who was a bank manageress and uh, she helped me with the funds and the government helped. Sounds like you robbed the bank. Well, it, no, um, it, it, was, it was a very, very um, useful uh, contribution from the bank managers and from that the government were very kind in that they actually doubled any new money that we raised. Generous donations from a corporate community fund also helped. But it's not only corridors that can be transformed. This classroom puts pupils on the surface of the moon where they can gaze at the solar system. They may be in West Bromwich, but it's simply out of this world.